Breaking news in the last hour, Derek Chauvin, the former Minneapolis police officer convicted of killing George Floyd, just changed his plea to guilty in the federal case against him. He's facing federal charges of violating Floyd's civil rights. Chauvin and the three other officers involved in Floyd's death were all indicted back in May, originally entering not guilty pleas. NBC's Ron Allen is outside the courthouse uh, in St. Paul, Minnesota. So, Ron, first of all, do we know why Chauvin changed his plea? He didn't say exactly, but the expectation is that he is going to get a uh, he faced a life sentence in that federal civil rights case that was uh, supposed to begin. The trial was supposed to begin in January. So by doing this, he avoids the potential life sentence. He did get a sentence or a recommended sentence of about 25 years, which will add to the time that he already has, 22, 22 and a half years, because of the state conviction. Those sentences will run concurrently if the judge finally approves all of that. Um, and he is supposed to serve 90 percent of that time. So do the math. He could perhaps be released to serve some time on probation when he is into his 60s or 70s, perhaps. But more importantly than all of that, this is a, a, a big moment because it's the first time that he has accepted some responsibility and said that he is accountable for what happened. And that is one thing that George Floyd's family is taking from this, that they say this brought them some measure of closure because there is some accountability. He, he, they also said that they wish he had done this a long time ago to spare them all the anguish and grief that they've been going through, uh, through, through the, the trial and everything else that has been going on. Here's uh, how some of George Floyd's relatives reacted to the guilty plea. Take a listen. I don't expect an apology and I don't, I don't honestly care to have one. He knew what he was doing. He had nine minutes and 29 seconds to understand what he was doing and stop kneeling. He chose not to. And of course, this is not the end of all this. There, there's still a federal trial for the three other officers who were involved in that incident. Uh, they also face state charges as well. So th there's a lot of a lot of legal process to still go on. A lot of anguish for this entire community in Minneapolis. Uh, the, the hope was that this trial, uh, this guilty plea, would would prevent another, the need for another trial, and therefore help Minneapolis and the country, for that matter, take a little pause from all the, the trauma that the, these trials have brought. And, of course, for the family of George Floyd, um, this is a, a, an important day. But as they say, you know, they're never going to heal from all this. They, one relative said that, you know, he wants uh, Chauvin to feel some of the pain that George Floyd felt and some of the pain that the family is feeling now. So there's still a lot of grief, a lot of mourning for what happened for, the, for their lost brother, son. Uh, and that's, of course, probably never going to go away. But this is a moment, a step along the way towards justice. And as I said, there are still trials for the other officers to come in federal court and in state court. Uh, and Chauvin is likely to spend the rest of his life in prison. Craig? Ron Allen outside that courthouse for us in St. Paul, Minnesota. Ron, thank you. We just heard from uh, the nephew of George Floyd. George Floyd's legal team also just releasing a statement moments ago. And it reads in part, quote, Derek Chauvin callously knelt on the neck of George Floyd for nine minutes, 29 seconds, clearly violating his civil and human rights by robbing him of breath and life for that he should spend the rest of his life behind bars. Chauvin's accomplices, who will face trial in January of next year, should be held accountable for their actions to the fullest extent of the law.